Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ma ba'da Habita fillah What is the importance of knowing and understanding shirk? One of the things which illustrate for us the importance of knowing shirk is as we mentioned the statement of Muhammad ibn Abdul Hab rahimahullah ta'ala who said وَأَعْظَمْ مَا نَاهَا عَنْهُ أَشْرِكْ That the greatest prohibition from Allah is shirk. The greatest thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited is shirk or the most severe thing. So that lets us know shirk is, uh, is something severe. And as we mentioned in the beginning of the treaties, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabi al-kareem, Inna allaha la yaghfiru an yushrika bih, wa yaghfiru ma duna thalika liman yasha. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabi al-kareem, Verily Allah does not forgive that you associate partners with him. <coughs> but he forgives other than that for whomsoever he subhanahu wa ta'ala pleases. So this clarifies for us that shirk is the greatest sin. So in order to avoid this sin and to avoid the consequences and to avoid not being forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by dying upon shirk, by dying upon kufr, which negates tawheed, which negates iman, then we have to know and understand shirk. And that's why we emphasize that and that's why we have went through some of the definitions that some of the scholars of Islam have mentioned. Uh, also we see that the companions and they were the Salaf Asali. They were the Ras of the Salaf. Meaning that they were the head of the Salaf. They are the Ras of the the Ras of the uh, Jama'ah. They are the head the leaders of the Jama'ah, of the Muslimin. They are the leaders of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Is the Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Radiyallahu ta'ala majma'een. And the Salaf al Salih. The Sahaba, Radiyallahu ta'ala majma'een. The Tabi'een. In the Itba'a Tabi'een. That's what we mean by when we talk about the Salaf. Or the Salaf al Salih. The righteous, righteous predecessors, the pious predecessors. <coughs> is the first three generations as the Prophet said, The best people is those of my generation, then those who follow them, and then those who follow them. Letting us know the fadl of the Salaf al -Sari. Letting us know the fadl of the Sahaba By fadl I mean the greatness of those of the companions of the Prophet أخرج البخاري ومسلم وغيرهم عن هذيفة بن يمان رضي الله تعالى عنه أنه قال كان صحابة يسألون رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن الخير وكنت أسأله عن الشر مخافة أن يدركني. In the hadith of Bukhari and Muslim, and other than Bukhari and Muslim, the hadith of هذيفة بن يمان رضي الله تعالى عنه. He said. The Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala majma'een, used to ask the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the good, on al khair. <clears throat> and I used to ask him about the evil out of fear that I would fall into it. So that shows the fiqh of the Sahaba, amumin, but the fiqh of Hudayfa, khususin, in general, or specifically. That Hudayfa from his fiqh, fiddin, his understanding of the religion, and his want, wanting to know more about the deen, and wanting to come closer to Allah bil, bil ilm, with knowledge, is he would ask the Prophet about the shar. And what is the shar? 
What's the Ashed the Shar as we mentioned? It's Shirk. And so this goes back to why Shirk, why it's important for us to know and understand Shirk. Why it's important, why we're emphasizing it, why we're talking about it, why we're trying to find out some of the definitions that the ulama of Islam mention. Then, along with shirk, then of course it's opposite, which is imperative that we know and understand, which is what? What's the opposite of shirk? Of not associating a partner with Allah, is associating a partner with Allah. The opposite is, is not associating a partner with Allah, which means tawheed. Is Islamic monotheism. And that comes down to the three categories of tawheed, as the latter ulama emphasized and, and categorized it into three categories. Meaning, tawheed al-rububiyyah, tawheed al-asma'i wa sifat, wa tawheed al-uluhiyyah. So the first category is tawheed al-rububiyyah, meaning the tawheed of, lord, of lordship. That Allah subhanahu wa is the lord of all things. Huwa rabbil alameen. He's the lord of all creation. And he is our razak He is the provider of every of, of, of everyone and everything, the sustainer. And he is al-khalik. He is the creator of everything. And everything other than Allah is from the makhlukat, is from the, his creation. And is dependent upon him. And he does not, he's not in need of his creation. <coughs> and Tawheed al asmai wa sifat, meaning the Tawheed of the divine names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divine names. Ar Rahman, He is the most merciful. And this is from his name. Ar Rahman is his name. And Rahma is his sifa, is his characteristic, his divine characteristic or his divine attribute. Is that Allah possesses Rahma. You possess Rahma. Your mother possesses rahmah. The women especially have mercy. But their mercy is unlike Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. There is nothing which is uh, like him. And he is the all-hearing and all-knowing. So letting us know that we may possess characteristics but our characteristics are not divine we possess attributes the attributes I can see I can hear I can speak but my hearing my seeing and my kalam is not like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is the aqidah the creed of Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah and we don't make tashbih like the people of bid'ah claim and heresy wa'iyadhin billah min thalika in Hiraf, Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen. And Tawheed Al Uluhiyah. Tawheed, the third category being <coughs> the Tawheed of uh, Ibadah or the Tawheed of, uh, of worship. Meaning, and this has to do with the servants or create the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their worship of Allah alone, meaning that all this has to do with their actions that all worship belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We supplicate to Allah. We make hajj for Allah. We pray to Allah. We strive in the cause of Allah. We do talab al-ilm, seeking to come closer to Allah and to have more knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen. We're studying this treatise bi idnillah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get the reward. If you use this to gain knowledge, to bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's going to get you the reward of Allah Azza wa Jal. But if you use it and it's about shirk, it's about showing off, and it's about, uh, and, and, and the shirk that's showing off would be the shirk khafi. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about it. Shirk, shirk al askar the minor shirk. And this is showing off or doing things to be heard, to have your name, uh, to gain fame. And as we mentioned countless times, and it's relevant now, is the hadith the Prophet sallallahu said the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala I believe it's Ibn Abbas radiallahu uh, ta'ala where he said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in al-awwal an-nas yuqda alayhi yawm al-qiyamati 
رجل استشهد فأتي به فعرفوني عمه فعرفها قال فما عملت فيها قال قاتلت فيك حتى استشهد قال كذبت ولكنك ولكنك فعلت لي قال هو جريء فقد قيل ثم أمر به فصحب لوجهي حتى ألقي في النار uh, The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم إلا آخر حديث The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said the first three that will be judged on the day of judgment uh, well, and from the first ones will be a man who was uh, martyred and then he will be brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he'll be asked uh, what did you do for my sake and he'll say I fought for your sake and I was martyred and then Allah will say you lied but rather you did it so that the people would say that you were uh, a brave or that you were a fighter and it was said about you meaning he got his reward in the dunya that he got the praise he, he wanted, which was shirk al-askar. فَقَدْ قِيلْ ثُمَّ أُمِرَ بِهِ فَصُحِبَ لَوَجِهِ حَتُّ الْكِفَنَا Then he was dragged in the... Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you lied, or rather you did it, so that the people would say that you were brave, or you were, uh, <coughs> you were, you know, a great fighter, and it was said, and then he will be dragged into the hellfire. So, it's not clear if this is the major or minor shirk. If it was just that he was showing off, but he still was trying to do some worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he, he, he showed off and he did the minor shirk, or he died on pure shirk that he did it only to get the praise of the people. Wa'iyadun billah, as an act of ibadah. The point being is to avoid shirk in all of its forms. And that even though this could have been a great act of ibadah on the behalf of this individual, it turned out to be his punishment in the hellfire. Wa'iyadun billah. And likewise, the second uh, individual, which is a rajulun ta'allam al ilmu allamahu wa qara fi fi Quran wa qara al Quran. Qala fi ma'amul tafiha. Qala qarat fi al Quran. Qala. تعلمت العلم وعلمته وقرأت في كل القرآن قال كذاب ولكنك فعلت لي قال هو قارئ وال و ويقول هو عالم وقد قيل وتقول وقد قيل ثم أمر به فصعب لوجهه حتى لقي في النار وكما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم so the second one was the عالم or the Qari, the people, the, the one who was a reciter, beautiful reciter of the Quran. And he came, he'll be, he will come before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask about what he will do. And he said, I read the Quran and I taught it. Uh, you know, I sought knowledge and then I taught it. You know, and then the people, and he said, you lied. Rather you did it so the people will say you were a great reciter and you did it so that the people will say you were an alim. And they did. And it was said about you. And then he'll be dragged in the fire. And the last one is the man who spent in righteousness. And he spent in many righteous ways, but he did it to show off, to be famous, to be heard. So it was shirk, and he was dragged in the hellfire. So that negates Tawheed. All of that is shirk. And it shows us that we have to do all of our ibadah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those three categories of Tawheed. With regards to Tawheed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets us know, and that's why we, we need to spend just a, a couple minutes at least talking about Tawheed. Because we've been talking about Shirk, which negates Tawheed, which is the first Naqid of Islam. You have to have an idea. We have to be be grounded and necessitate that we know Tawheed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem wa ma khalaqtu al-jinn wa l-insa lali abudun I have not created mankind and the jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me that's tawheed that's letting us know that our purpose our divine purpose that we're here the purpose that we're here that is a divine purpose because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated that purpose is to worship him and him alone that's, that's what our life amounts to that's the goal of our life is to use this dunya to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the ni'am that Allah has given us to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, and this lets us know that all the Anbiya were sent with the message of Tawheed. 
قال سبحانه ولقد بعثنا في كل أمة رسول إن نعبد الله واجتنبوا تعبود. Allah subhanahu wa taala says and verily we have sent among every umma a messenger proclaiming worship Allah alone and avoid or keep away from the tagood those false deities worship besides Allah subhanahu subhanahu wa taala. That ayah there. It affirms why we were sent, or it, it's an affirmation anyway of Tawheed, because it's and it's Tawheed al Ibadah. It's Tawheed al Uluhiya. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ummat al Rasulin in Ni'budullah. Allah commanded to worship Allah, that they were all sent to worship Allah. That's Tawheed al Ibadah. And that's an affirmation of Tawheed. Which Tanibu Tagud. And this is a prohibition. So here, there is something which is legislated or commanded, and there's a prohibition in that ayat. The command to Tawheed and the negation or prohibition of shirk, which tenibu ta'gut, stay away from worshiping uh, and associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worshiping anything, uh, any other deities, distance yourself from them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fikidab al Kareem. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ لَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ بِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem uh, And your Lord has decreed that you worship none but Him alone and that you be dutiful to parents. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned and commanded again let us know our duty is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And along with that to be kind and dutiful to parents letting us know the importance of being good and kind and gentle and obedient to our parents. And that's the affirmation of Tawheed. Those are just a few verses and the Quran is filled with verses of, uh, of Tawheed, affirming Tawheed. And this is the purpose of our worship and Tawheed is the opposite of Shirk, of course. Tawheed, monotheism, is the opposite of shirk, which is actually pot, uh, polytheism. Going back to the treaty, treaties, so Imam Muhammad ibn Wahhab, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, I'lam, rahimakallah, and nawaqid al-Islam huwa asha. That the nullifiers of faith are ten, and we already spoke about that. He said the first being shirk, uh, in, in, in worship by associating partners with Allah the Almighty, uh, Allah the Almighty says, Verily Allah does not forgive associating partners with Him. However, He forgives uh, whatsoever He pleases uh, of sins other than that. And Allah the Almighty says, Whoever associates partners with Allah, then He has uh, forbidden him paradise, and the hell fire will be His abode, and the oppressors have none to help them, uh, will have none to help them. So letting us know again, negating shirk and affirming uh, that we and, and and affirming the punishment of shirk letting us know that the the punishment the volimeen they will have no one to help them and support them on the on Yom Al for committing this loom of shirk and he said from shirk is sacrificing an animal for other than Allah like those who sacrifice to the jinn and the graves the reason this treatise was written was to make evident the danger of polytheism shirk and highlight it is the most serious violation of Islam and Tawheed, as we mentioned. Uh, and we mentioned about Tawheed and Ikhlas. And it, uh, implicit in the definition of Islam is the negation of shirk. Uh, because Islam is istislam lillah bi tawheed wal inqiyad luhu bi ta'a wa khulus min shirk wa ahli. As some of the ulama, like the ulama uh, da'wah that we mentioned, those uh, Muhammad ibn Wahhab and those after him, they defined Islam in this fashion. They said Islam is the Islam lillah bi tawheed wal inqiyad luhu wa wa ta'a wa khulus min shirku ahli. That Islam uh, is is the Islam lillah bi tawheed is submitting to Allah subhanahu wa taala uh, in strict obedience to His commands and separating oneself from shirk in polytheism or in polytheists. And Allah says. Uh, and they were only commanded to worship Allah alone in sincerity for him is the religion. In Surah Al-Bayna, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهُ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ دِينَ 
This illustrates the importance of directing all worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, and this is implied in the meaning of Islam. Lahuddin. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is, 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 all worship belongs to Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah has commanded us with worship. And He's forbidden us from shirk, as we mentioned. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam says, as Allah mentions in the Quran, uh, we are free from you and disbelieve in that which you worship besides Allah. And between us is enmity and hatred until you believe in Allah alone. This is in Surah Al uh, Mumtahina, uh, verse 4. This shows that pure monotheism, by distancing oneself from disbelief and disbelievers and those factors which are taken as gods besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's what this ayat illustrates for us that you should make your associations, your close companions, those who you're around, because when you're around someone, you're either giving da'wah or receiving da'wah, more or less. That most of the time, the relationships are as such that you are receiving uh, some sort of da'wah or you're giving some sort of da'wah. You're setting a good example. So you want to set the good example, especially when you're in a society in which you are, have to mix with various types of people with various types of beliefs. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al -Kareem, whoever disbelieves in those things worship besides Allah and believes in Allah has grasped a strong trust. And this is Surah Al-Baqarah in verse 256. And as we mentioned uh, prior to this that worship which is our purpose, our divine purpose uh, uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned al-ibadah kullu ma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yardahu min uh, a'mal wa af, wa min a'mal al-zahir wa batin min aqwal wa, wa a'mal wa af'al uh, al-zahir wa batin wa kama qala Shaykh al-Islam he said that ibadah is everything that Allah loves and is pleased with from actions and sayings open and hidden. That's how we define worship in Islam. So worship is all-encompassing. The violation of that worship is what? It's shirk. It's shirk and kufr. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ The Prophet والسلام, said, <clears throat> May Allah curse the one who sacrifices to other than him. May Allah curse the one who curses his parents. May Allah curse the one who innovates. May Allah curse the one who changes the signpost on the roads. And this is in Sahih Muslim. Here the Prophet والسلام, forbids us from certain actions and cursing our parents and very explicitly warns that these actions incur Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wrath. So by staying away from these actions, we earn the pleasure of Allah. Uh, we earn the pleasure of Allah, which is an act of worship. So that lets us know that affirms for us worship. It also affirms, affirms for us, as we, as Sheikh Muhammad ibn al Wahhab mentioned, that and a part of that shirk is sacrificing to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like those who sacrifice to the jinn in the graves. The Prophet alayhi salatu salam mentioned, the first thing he mentioned in that hadith, may Allah curse the one who sacrifices to other than him. Letting us know that uh, you incur the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet ﷺ made supplication that Allah's rahmah be removed from the one who sacrifices to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Letting us know from that al-mafhum al-mukhalifa which means the opposite understanding is that those who sacrifice for Allah are doing that which pleases him. And that which pleases him is what? Is worship, as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said. So, that falls under ibadah, to sacrifice, and it is good ibadah if it is sacrifice uh, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is negative shirkiyat if it is other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's cursed. And we've already defined shirk and I want to mention just a couple of things. Shirk al-Akbar, shirk in general, 
has <coughs> a, a common classification that the ulama mention is of two types. Shirk al-Akbar or Shirk al-Askar. Shirk al-Akbar refers to the major shirk. Shirk al-Askar refers to the minor shirk. The difference between the shirk, the major shirk and the minor shirk, the major shirk is that which takes you out of the fold of Islam. So that concerns us in our treaties. The, these ten nawaqid in Islam. When we talk about shirk here, we're talking about the shirk that takes you out, uh, 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 that, uh, that takes you out of the milit militant Islam, that negates your Islam. And the minor shirk is that which does not uh, negate your Islam, meaning you're still a Muslim, but you're do you've done a major sin. And uh, another point that the scholars mention is they often mention that shirk al askar is a wasila, that it is a means to shirk al akbar. Shirk al askar is a means to shirk al akbar. And that's how you can define whether something is shirk or not. That's one of the benefits that our scholars mention. Um, and we gave some examples. We said about shirk al askar showing off and so forth. The major shirk. <coughs> uh, we mentioned some of the major shirk. Some of the things would be, of course... Uh, as we mentioned, sacrificing to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab mentioned. mentioned. <clears throat> also, the uh, supplicating to the dead, supplicating to anyone or anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, directing any kind of ibadah to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that this is falls under the major shirk. <clears throat> if you do, uh, um, you, you put your, your tawakkul, your full trust. I'm not saying that you trust somebody, you trust somebody to pick you up, you trust them to fulfill a trust. We're not talking about that. We're talking about your heart being fully involved to the effect of ibadah that you rely upon them in something that for perhaps they have no ability to fulfill. For example, if I say, well, my mother's in Seattle now, and I'm here in Saudi Arabia, I trust that she can fix, uh, 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 you know, fix my problems in here. I'm putting my trust in her. No, she can't do anything for me here. She cannot. She she's she's not here. She doesn't have that ability. So me knowing that she does not have the ability and putting my full trust, meaning my heart, is in that. The tawakkul of itimad. That itimad should be itimad al Allah. That trust, that full trust, putting your affairs, resting your affairs with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heart. We're not talking about someone fulfilling a trust, it's okay. We can do those things. Those things don't fall under ibadah. But it becomes ibadah and it becomes shirk when you put your heart fully into putting uh, trust in someone, putting full tawakkul in. Uh, the creation, and especially with regards to things that they are unable to uh, fulfill. Uh, when a person commits shirk, they are underestimating the divinity and might of Allah. Some people argue that they are not pure or holy enough to supplicate directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or seek his forgiveness and requires someone holy or a saint, regardless of whether he or she is living or dead, to intercede on their behalf. However, this is shirk. This is the major shirk. And this is the exact argument used by some Christians and the Catholics. Because when you go to the church, or when you go to the, as we mentioned prior to this, that the uh, many Catholics, they go to the altar and they confess, they confess to the priest, a priest that's inside that those uh, cabinets or whatever you call them, and they make their confessions there. Father, I've forgiven. I, 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 Father, please forgive me. Father, I've sinned. This is the, the statements they make, and it's almost as if they're supplicating to them. They're seeking forgiveness from, uh, they're making shafa'a. They're making a false shafa'a the shifa which is prohibited and we'll talk about that much more in depth as one of the nullifiers of, his, uh, of Islam when we get to that stage 
But this shafa'a, uh, this intercession, is only with those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased and who have the ability to make intercession. Who, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the authority to make intercession. And we do not make intercession with the dead. Nor uh, the living, except that you can ask someone perhaps to supplicate on your behalf, brother, because you think this is a righteous brother or a righteous sister. And so you say, you know, or, or the sheikh or the imam, can you please just pray for me? Just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to, to guide me because I'm making mistakes and stuff like this. As long, and, and with your guidance, with I mean, with your own, your supplications directly to Allah. Because you're not supplicating to them. You're just asking for them to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you. This is permissible. Uh, so, however, for you to ask for their forgiveness, they can't forgive. They can forgive you in this dunya for things that you've done that's violated them uh, regarding their rights, but not regarding the rights of Allah or the rights of someone else. You can't go, oh, brother, please forgive me. I committed zina last night. Please forgive me. I was smoking weed last night. Please forgive me. I did such and such. Or, you know, I, I stole, I robbed someone so-and-so last night. Or I cheated or I stole, whatever. The forgiveness is with Allah Azza wa Jal. The repentance, the toba, is an act of ibadah, and that is directed to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There are those from amongst them, and this gives us the context of this treatise that the people had fallen into shirk uh, and shirk in ibadah, because during the prior history in Islam, and this is why, just as as a, a faida before we close in this topic. What you find in the uh, many of the older books of the Salaf, when they talk about Tawheed, they emphasize Tawheed al Asma wa Sifat. And this is the reason for about the, the, the Salaf used to emphasize al Asma wa Sifat in their treatises, like a, a famous book called A Tawheed by Ibn Khuzayma. Uh, uh, many, many books you find, um, and, and many books that have been translated into English, some books like that might not be just about Tawheed, just about Islam in general, maybe Imam Baba Hari's uh, uh, book, uh, uh, The Creed. Uh, many of those books of, of the Salaf that you'll find when they talked about Tawheed, they talked about Tawheed, uh, al asmai wa Sifat, or the Divine Names and Attributes, because those early sects, they went astray with regards to al asmai wa Sifat, uh, the Mu'tazila, the Jahmiya, the Asha'ira, uh, many of those groups, they went astray with it, and the Ma'atila, the various uh, types of Ma'atila, that they went astray with regards to the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, either distorting them or either negating them uh, or what have you. But they did not, they were not known in general for making uh, shirk in Tawheed, uh, al rububiyah or Tawheed, uh, Tawheed uh, al uluhiya But the later generations, much later, shirk began to enter into the Ummah as far as uh, worshipping directly other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, with, with the advent of those extreme Shia sects uh, that worship Ali radiallahu ta'ala or, uh, you know, worship the, uh, say their imams are infallible, uh, and all the many other groups and sects and a lot of the extreme Sufis who worship graves, uh, who, you know, violate Tawheed in various ways, supplicate to the dead, sacrifice to the dead, all of those acts of, iba uh, of ibadah, those violations of Tawheed al-ibadah that came later, that came much later. Uh, and that would take surveying history to find out when uh, exactly those kind of uh, shirk uh, uh, became rampant in the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, to where you had in all the Muslim lands even, uh, prior to Muhammad ibn al Wahhab and the establishment of the first Saudi state you had uh, obviously he made jihad uh, uh, here in the Arab Peninsula 
to and that helped to establish the the Saudi state and, and now which we have the Bilad Tawheed where we don't have any outright shirk like that and it's one of the few places on the earth that are uh, free from that whereas most of the Muslim world even has uh, remnants of you know an extreme Sufi sects that are open we're not saying that there's not they're not here or that some people don't hold those beliefs but it's not open it's not allowed here whereas in other countries if you go to Yemen if you go to Egypt if you go to Syria and all these places before before their conflict and probably even now uh, and in other places Chechnya Bosnia wherever Indonesia you'll find that there are people who worship graves there are Koburiyun you'll find that people supplicate to the dead and people supplicate to their saints uh, people look at their pictures of their imams and cry and say and to say they don't really have tawakal and uh, they make tawassal uh, with the dead seek to draw nearer th uh, through the dead and, and intercession uh, and all kind of things even many people come here to make hajj and umrah they try to seek intercession from the prophet from the grave uh, and all kind of things by supplicating to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so this shirk has come into the ummah so this became later in the later generations and that's why a lot of the books now you have kitab al tawheed the books of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn al-Qayyim which before uh, Muhammad ibn al Wahhab, that they dealt with this kind of shirkiyat that this had become rampant in their time but in the prior time the, uh, during the time of the Salaf and some of the later generations, they didn't have to deal with that. Rather, the shirk uh, was in issues of al asma wa sifat, and it was the, uh, uh, a violation of al asma wa sifat. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.